Hello, and thank you for joining us on today's FinTech Finance FF News Virtuina. On today's episode, we're going to be looking at partnering. Is it FinTech's secret source? And I've got two chaps right at the heart of this topic who are going to hopefully enlighten us and, and take us through really something that I think is a core part of FinTech and finances success. So without further ado, let's kick off with introductions. We've got Daniel Cronin, the co-founder of Integrated Finance. Daniel, how are you doing here today? Uh, I'm doing great. Just dealing with a, a little bit of background noise with uh, my three-year-old son wrestling with my uh, uh, father-in-law. So apologies, <laughs> if, apologies for that. But uh, no, it's, it's great to be here in, in all seriousness. Delighted. Oh. It's absolutely brilliant. And if we do get a bit of WWE wrestling in the background, I'm sure that'll be fine. And also joining us, we have Richard Stockley from Currency Cloud. Richard, how are you doing here today? Good day, Doug. Yes, good. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's an absolute pleasure having you on as well. I'm so excited to get both your guys' insights into the topic. And, and without, you know, without further ado, actually, I think it's best if we could find out a bit more about you um, before we kick off to set the scene. So, Richard, could you tell our viewers your role at Currency Cloud and what you've been working at with that organization? Yeah, sure. So um, at Currency Cloud, I head up commercial partnerships. And uh, by that, I mean, um, well, I guess, you know, partnerships is one of these words that uh, is very poorly, it's very widely used and poorly understood in terms of it can mean lots of different stuff. We yeah. talk about our clients as, as as partners. We talk about suppliers as partners. Um, what I focus on is the ecosystem that surrounds our clients. So the people that we sell to and consume our service, what are the other ecosystem participants and how can collaboration with those other ecosystem participants give value to our clients? Um, in terms of better customer journeys or um, um, uh, better experiences, more joined up solutions. Yeah, uh, I think that's so fascinating because it, it. I think before when everyone was so siloed into what they did and only did what they could, um, not looking at that value add or the end customer at the entire of the ecosystem was very commonplace in finance. So to hear that you're working on looking at it in a broader spectrum is so brilliant. So uh, Richard, thank you so much. Um, also, Daniel, could we also get a better background to yourself, your role and integrated finance, please? Sure. So um, I'm a co-founder of integrated finance and with a team of slightly more than 30, uh, the reality is I do a little bit of everything at the company uh, when everything's running smoothly, which uh, which for any startup is never uh, my <laughs> my my areas of focus are growing the business. So uh, market feedback, uh, getting customers into the top line of the funnel, training sales guys and how to get those guys to the bottom, uh, expanding our partnership network, improving our partnership network to make sure that uh, mutual customers are getting a better experience with integrated finance than they would have got direct uh, and ultimately just just trying to scale the business absolutely amazing well guys thank you so much for those introductions now richard you actually kind of um hinted onto my first question uh, in your intro there so i'm going to come to you first um, and i think it's fair to say that ecosystem has become almost a bit of a buzzword because it can mean so many different things people use it sometimes when they shouldn't so when it comes to financial services, what does it actually mean to create an ecosystem in this new embedded or integrated finance world? And and how big a part is direct partnerships going to be? I think I think what we've seen in the last couple of years is that uh, fintechs are becoming better and better at less and less things. So there's a there's a trend to go narrow and deep. Um, mm. I think being all things to all men is a is a, is a difficult ask. And so as different uh, organizations specialize in different areas, um, they realize that they're not the whole solution, they're just one piece of it. And so collaboration with those adjacent parts in order for our clients to consume a, a seamless solution for their customers and provider services is absolutely essential. I completely agree. And and also, um, Daniel, could I also get your perspective on it and, and looking at where you see the ecosystem currently? Does it live up to the buzzword hype that, that people attribute it to? Uh, no, I, I don't think it does yet, um, but I think it's a nascent market. Um, I think it was Wade Arnold, uh, a, a, the CEO of Move, who is a currency cloud customer in the States. He he invited me to this term primitives. So 20 years ago, it was 
monolith solutions. That's why banks became so big. They did everything for everyone. Yeah. Then with the era of uh, emerging APIs, you had vertical integration. So outside of our industry, Apple are probably the best at that. They make everything work, but it only works with one service provider. And then really the, the maturity of the APIs, which was in part driven by guys like Currency Cloud, has, uh, and again, this is not my term, I'm stealing it. Um, it, it it's evolved something getting more popularly termed as primitives. So what is a primitive? It's, it's the smallest subset of features that uh, are monetizable by, by an individual or a company. And what you've seen established really in the, I, I'd say only in the last five years in all reality, um, companies that have pre-existed this were doing something slightly different before, is yeah. an emergence of all of these primitives, whether it be KYC, transaction monitoring, mm -hmm. uh, fraud spotting, account issuance, uh, local money transfer, international money transfer, FX money transfer, as uh, as Richard said, everyone's becoming amazing at one of those things. And why I said there is no ecosystem is because it it hasn't emerged yet. If if you look at non regulated financial stacks, um, th there's very mature ecosystems. And, and what I mean by that is, if you go into Salesforce, you're going to see the Salesforce market of integrations. And it's the same faces that you see every single time. And if you go onto the Spotify marketplace, you're going to see the same integrations, zero. All of those have created a huge ecosystem. In banking, it's so much more regulated that the ability to transmit data from one entity to another has a lot more protections and safeguardings around it. Yeah, I think one of the things Currency Cloud did a great job of is exposing their technology for other people to consume. And it's beginning to establish quite a nascent ecosystem now and part, part of the reason we started integrated finance is we saw who the key players are in this industry and we in a previous life we had trouble connecting to all of them we wanted to start knitting that together so that's absolutely fascinating and and it's always quite exciting to be uh, a part of a nascent industry really kind of stepping out and doing something in banking which has obviously been around for thousands of years and and you guys are really taking it into a, a new direction and and Richard I think one thing that is, is is becoming apparent here is is the difficulty is the partnering because of the regulation but once you do that you get those serious value adds so how does partnering with tech companies and finance companies together how's that actually going to benefit the financial services provider by scaling to for instance new markets scaling to new customers or even just as i mentioned before providing an increased value add to their customers they already have yeah in a lot of ways our our clients what they want to do is they want to they want to take their core product to market quickly so right. they want to assemble best in class and have uh, have a, a robust product in the market that customers can consume as quickly as possible and then thereafter they want to iterate and build on those capabilities as quickly as possible now in that sense that's where a lot of the fintech you know the the the, the sort of the fintech clients out there that, that we service um have an edge over uh, more incumbent banking providers is that they can bring these new products to market very 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 quickly because the architecture on which they're based is very very modular they can um you know they can start with a uh, a card offering and an account offering and then they can bolt on and they can say hey look we realize that we can provide an offering in cross-border payments we'll bring currency cloud in because they're the best players in that space and then you know next they may bring on um, uh, brokerage services so they can bolt on and take these new products to market very very quickly um the way that they do that is by by seamlessly taking all those best in class solutions and 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 wrapping them into a to a single user experience and and certainly that's where our partnership with integrated finance really comes um uh, you know is, is is super valuable in terms of being that data orchestration layer and making all those discrete best in class um players really sing together that's absolutely fascinating. And, and before we, we continue with the conversation, I actually um, just want to, to understand the, the, the partnership a bit more. And maybe Daniel, you know, Richard's outlined it there, but you, maybe you could you could take our viewers through through this partnership in your own words too, please. Sure. So um, if I was trying to raise money off of you uh, on on my VC deck, you'd see we are a 
software as a service pass orchestration layer, um, which doesn't really mean anything to anyone who's outside of the ecosystem. Um, boiling it down, what we're trying to do is give people access to the products and services that they want without having to technically integrate all of them. It's uh, a single interface, a single API, and they can consume the best features that you need of, say, Currency Cloud. But, say, Currency Cloud is not pouring energy into, for example, digital onboarding. Um, it's it's doable, but it's not where they're currently viewing uh, that they're going to win the market. Yeah. So if you're a, a young fintech entrepreneur, you go, okay, got to do cross-border, going to take Currency Cloud. Got to, uh, if I'm going to be doing cross-border, Currency Cloud probably wants to know that I'm checking who I'm giving these accounts and payment services to. So I've got to find a digital onboarding solution. It's another integration with integrated finance. It's not. Um, say you do your digital onboarding, you issue your account and do payments through Currency Cloud. Currency Cloud might also want to know that you're monitoring the behavior of your users to make sure nothing's going askew. You might work with, say, Comply Advantage or, or another one of the leaders at transaction monitoring. Again, if you're a young startup, that's one, two, three integrations just off the top of my head. You're not going to have bandwidth to do those in sync. They're going to be consequential and sequential. So let's say three or four months integration each. That's 12 months before you've gone live. The sales guy at all of the three vendors providing services to you probably doesn't get paid till you go live. And your burn rate is astronomical because you spent all of that time on stuff that you really don't actually care about. You just need to get it done to make sure you're satisfying quite an intense regulatory environment. Yeah. So what does integrated finance do? We aggregate your vendors into a single API or interface so that you can worry about going live with your actual product. Amazing. Now, it's not only a partnership in this sense, guys. I, I, there's um, There's been a report between the two organizations and, and I think that's... Um, yeah, we're going to have that embedded so that our our viewers can, can read up on it. But I want to, to understand it a bit more as well. So, um, Richard, you know, your report highlights um, from my reading two types of partnerships, you know, integrated and, and advisory. Um, Daniel was obviously talking very much about the integrated approach. You know, do you think there's going to be a preference for, um, you know, specific technology needs? Or do you think that the cultures have to change to, to be able to have this integrated approach? Or really is the way that, that you guys are built as a you know, very open vendor, you know, open to partnerships, means that suddenly any organization can just integrate, even if their technology is behind, even if their culture is behind? I, I, I think there's a... Um... Architecturally, we're we, like you say, we're we're very open. You know, our APIs are, are published. You can go in and, and have a play with them and see what they see what they do. Wow. Uh, you can consume us independently. Um, you can um, work together with our partners to you know, such as Integrated Finance and others, to build a to build a, a more complete solution that has other parts that we don't you know specialize in or, or provide. Um, I think where um, where I spend a lot of my time is understanding um, what our clients needs are and what are the what are the ecosystem adjacencies that that make the most sense um, now it has two two veins um, one is one is obviously the the capabilities so are, uh, do they fulfill a need that is adjacent to us that there's not a great degree of overlap that if we put two and two together we actually come out with a with a with, with three with something that's incrementally valuable for, for our client. Um, but then secondly is is a, is a is a cultural element as well in terms of how can the working relationship between these two organizations actually provide an edge as well it's a it's a softer less measurable thing you know it doesn't it doesn't come out in the in the you know in the pattern in the specifications of what each player does but that working relationship and that pattern of working is really really important in terms of getting stuff done what what we are building within currency cloud is, is a um, uh, a whole series of, of partnerships where we know the working relationships and we can with a very very um, uh, with a high degree of confidence be able to say hey, you know dear Mr client you, you you can rely on these partners here because they do X Y and Z and we've worked with them before and this is the success and we know that they're a safe pair of hands so that trust and working relationship I I, I certainly cannot um, underscore enough. 
Um, but we're very flexible, you know, in terms of um, in, in terms of uh, working to client demand. That is that is you know essentially we we understand the the needs of the client and we we work to put all the pieces together to to solve to solve industry problems. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's absolutely brilliant. It, it's starting, you know, I'm starting to see the ingredients from from both of you that this might be the secret sauce um, to enabling fintechs to thrive because, well. As you said, Richard, just then, you know, you've you've got to look at the the adjacent organizations that can just provide this value add. Um, Daniel, you brought up the fact that for you know fintechs that are starting up, being able to know that their regulatory, um, comp- you know, their AML compliance, their KYC compliance, that's all handled under one roof, um, suddenly means that we're going to get some really exciting propositions very quickly, rather than on this traditional timeline of three to four years um so if we have that we've now established that in this conversation uh, i want to move on and, and richard i'm coming to you again first apologies uh, mm-hmm. daniel I'll be, I'll be hearing you with the next question but um richard from currency cloud's perspective when it, when it comes to partnerships i mean we've been discussing how much this is a regulated industry what can go wrong in the early stages you know what's your advice um, to making successful partnerships and and how have you done it so well at Currency Cloud previously? Yeah, um, uh, leaning on the point before, it's 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 around complementary adjacencies. So um, three sort of um, three sort of veins there. One is um, partnerships such as what we have with Integrated Finance, where they fundamentally do something that we don't do and that our clients really really value. And we have a working relationship with them that we can bring them in and it completes the solution in a way that we couldn't do independently. Um, second is, is, is when we're kind of connecting up to a broader suite of solutions. So um, by that, I mean, um, if you take a partner of ours, Drive Wealth in North America, they, they're an execution broker. So if you're trading stocks here in the UK, but you're trading on the US market, you need an execution brokerage firm in the States to actually make that trade happen. And we work with them. Um, uh, we have a great relationship with them, but it's it's um, we're the bridge in terms of getting the money to where it needs to go. There's um, the integration happens on a client by client basis. It's not as as pre built as we've got with integrated finance, but there is a a, a symbiotic. Uh, relationship in terms of they need us and we need them and we work together to solve a, a client um, a client problem and then thirdly is is what you term sort of more advisory uh, type relationships this is where we bring in expertise that we don't have in-house so um, your point around uh, compliance um, we have good friends at Thistle initiatives they are a, they're a compliance consultancy um, a lot of our clients uh, they come to us. They're guys that guys that have a um, an idea about providing a regulated service, but they've never done it before. That journey uh, b- between having the idea and actually being in a state where you've got all the uh, the regulatory policies in place to be able to provide that regulated service um, is quite a journey. And so we bring an expertise like this all um, now and then just to say, hey, look, talk to these guys. They know what we require from a regulation perspective. Um, and uh, and we can accelerate that journey to where you have a product in the market. Brilliant. I mean, it really does sound like you're embodying this whole partnership narrative. Even when you're looking to partner yourself, you already you speak to others to kind of make it to facilitate it and ensure that it goes smoothly. Um, and also, Daniel, if I think it's fair to say that you maybe um, integrated finance is almost the fulcrum of of all this, you know, that's enabling all this. I'd love to hear your perspective as well as, you know, what can go wrong in the early stages of a partnership? You've you've discussed already about the the regulatory um, burden, but you know, with with partnerships that are inter- interacting in this space, what's the key thing that they should know going in? So, I suppose it depends on from whose perspective. Is it the participants that are combining to serve a mutual customer, mm. or is it that mutual customer whose perspective is it if you're talking about the participants um there is um there is an industry agnostic graveyard of failed partnerships where uh maybe the executive team uh got together and went this sounds like a good idea um and just assumed that it would happen because of that um what i've often found is 
partnerships work better from the ground up rather, rather than top down because it builds organic value that way. Um, let me give you an example. If if we're, if a sales guide integrated finance is um, is contributing to a deal and they know that there are other components that need that the entrepreneur or founder needs to deliver this. That person is incentivized to find those solutions for them. Right. They're incentivized to find out who can I go to to, to help with this um, that help with this guy's problem because I can't do all of it on my own. Um, and through kind of trial and error, you, you build organic relationships there, and pretty soon you're then looking back six, six months. Oh gosh, we've we've done five um, you know five deals with Currency Cloud. Uh, wh why are they? proving so popular on our network yeah. um and that builds a business case in in and of itself to formalize these partnerships to come and do stuff like this that does mutual promotion whereas i've I, i've often seen a ceo and a ceo get together they go you've got a good service i've got a good service let's make this happen a, a message um is, is given from up on high that doesn't align with the the lower level incentives of the of the participants in that organization and it doesn't really work. So what, what I really value from Currency Cloud is there's quite a lot of active energy across uh, across the size of that business, but especially sales guys don't send stuff to us that they know we can't help with. It's going to make them look bad. It's going to make us look bad and it's going to frustrate the mutual client and vice versa. Whilst we're not a regulated entity, the founders have previously ran a regulated entity and we know what looks uh technically like a person can do it um from a risk perspective maybe they're operating in territories are, are they going to participate in this and and once you once you build up that report at the ground level you generally see uh partnerships drive um, much more from there on in that's probably the biggest thing for the participants from um if i was starting a company and i realized i needed five or six people to help me Probably the thing I, looking back, the, the mistakes I made was not quizzing the person on the thing that they were recommending me. When we launched a venture years ago, basically, you could tell they'd Googled the answer to my question and said, I go to these guys. But they right. didn't understand how those guys work. They didn't have any relationship with the people there. And yeah. so when I would hit a difficult question that may, re may sometimes require more than two parties to contribute, such as how do you want the funds of the flow of funds to move through you currency cloud in this environment? The answer isn't always going to be the same. It depends on the model that you're you're taking from the participant. Yeah. And so if I was a founder, I'd want to know that there is a rapport between the partners, because that way you're not going to start getting stonewalled and people passing blame. Everyone's going to contribute to try and deliver to solve the problem you have when you're launching your startup. Mm. It's kind of, kind of uh, you know, uh, touching on what, what uh, Richard said earlier on in the fact that, you know, it has to be a holistic partnership, you know, and, and then it's it's the culture advisory as well as the tech that's being connected. And to be able to have someone that you can actually connect with and talk to, as well as having seamless open API tech is going to be critical. Now, Daniel, you've spoken, um, you know, in, in this conversation about, you know, for instance, founders and, and fintechs that are looking to start up. But let's now change the narrative to um, fintechs that are connecting to very large scale legacy based institutions. Um, and especially when if financial products, as we've been saying, are becoming increasingly sophisticated and targeted and almost I don't like this word, but niche. Um, everyone doing what they do perfectly. How is that ecosystem going to change? Are we going to see the large scale legacy based institutions actually be able to integrate with all these other organizations, all these fintechs um, in a timely manner too? So I suppose it, it depends on what layer of the cake you're looking at. Right. Okay, long, yeah. long term. So if, if we're talking kind of future perfect for industry, you're, it, would, it would be banks cooperating together in, in a smoother fashion. Yeah. Uh, whether, uh, so, so the short and medium term mechanisms for that to have happened is, is 
banking as a service aggregation. So Barclays has a fantastic correspondent network all over the world. How is it that Currency Cloud, who is a, a technical abstraction from Barclays, can remit those funds faster, possibly to some of Barclays and correspondents? Barclays gets a, 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 a huge advantage through having their, their customer base and, and their clientele potentially aggregated, all of the technical headache aggregated, and still be able to move money faster through a participant on the network than they could have done themselves. So I, it, it makes total sense to me that this starts happening at the banking as a service level. Um, there's far more tech en enablement, uh, direct host to host integrations, which usually took engineers with 10, 15 years of experience on the banking network they're on, wow. is now getting replaced by grad students who understand a, a standard API. Yep. But Probably a lot, lot cheaper as well as a lot quicker as well than on those wages. Exactly. But the, but like the main counterpoint to that, and I think the thing that both integrated finance and currency cloud needs to wrestle with is you are, we're disintermediating very, very successful protocols. Um, mm -hmm. Swift, uh, currency cloud is a, is a, a participant on Swift, integrated mm -hmm. with, with Swift GPI. But a lot of um, what a lot of what Currency Cloud is doing is um, is kind of in parallel to Swift. So I, I think there's there's something that I, I haven't I haven't worked out yet whether uh, whether fintech is going to embrace and empower Swift or Swift empower fintech, or whether the emergent bass layers are going to create a, a kind of a, another substrata underneath Swift where they have their own messaging system. Currently, wow. that's Currently, that messaging system is getting more and more disparate as, as more fast players, more fintechs emerge. They're building the very best API they can, but they're generally only considering one one use case, their own customers. Yeah. So if you get 10 hyper successful bass players and then a, a fintech that wants to use all of them, there needs to be some sort of protocol for that. And uh, that's a, a non-subtle pun of what what integrated finance is trying to build. We're trying to build a protocol to make it easier to talk to all of these bass players. Absolutely amazing. And I mean, I've I've got to also get um, Richard from from your perspective, um, looking at Currency Cloud's partnership with the large fintech players as well. Um, you know, when it comes to companies like Revolut, Mambu. Um, what are what are some of the uh, opportunities that that come from from partnering them for their end customers? I always like to get the perspective of the end consumer at the very end of this ecosystem, humanize the conversation. I'd love mm -hmm. to get your perspective. What what is it that you guys provide in that instance? Well, you know, we, uh, the segments and clients that we provide are, are across the whole, uh, the, the, across a uh, pretty wide segment. Everything from sort of your FX brokers. Um, down one end to to large incumbent banks. So we're an infrastructure. Um, we provide a narrow and deep cross bo cross border payments infrastructure where we aggregate and obfuscate the complexity of the corresponding banking network and provide yeah. it in a way that can be easily consumed. But your point before about when then you have a client which has. Um, you know, legacy architecture, um, ways of working, uh, technology. How does our single access point then interact with a complicated world on the on the client side? And again, that's uh, where you know, from an advisory perspective, um, our our partnerships and consultancies come in to help understand what that golf is in terms of architecture. It's where um, pre-built and um and tech aggregation layers like integrated finance come in to say hey look we we need to bridge this gap how can you actually help automate that and lower the risk we have partners uh with uh the likes of, of 
of Nandu uh, thought machine around core banking platforms. Wow. So that's where uh, you know you need a, a, a ledger, and we've built a, a pre-integration with with both of those providers to really take a lot of the risk away about owning that integration. So you don't need to um, you don't need to uh, worry about the innovation and the the revving up on both sides. You know that that bridge between the, that user experience and that bridge between those two platforms is kept evergreen from somebody else. So that's one less problem to think about as as you run your business um, um, certainly the interoperability across different platforms is a key consideration of of mine going forward and i think what one of the challenges in the in in the coming years you know dan's at the forefront of this and it's the real raison d'etre of integrated finance and one of the reasons we love working with them is that trying to solve one of those really gnarly problems that is difficult it, it's easy to focus on one thing you know i'm a kyc provider and i do this i'm a international banking and we aggregate this um and certainly i'm um, taking on a um one of the one of the key problems in the industry coming up absolutely brilliant um and guys i just want to say a massive thank you um for, for all your insights because i think this is really the future of finance you know um as we said at the very beginning of the conversation it is fintech secret source it's it's enabled the fintechs to really get into the position that they are now and that's now spilling over across just from fintechs into banking and across the financial landscape um so i think we we are coming to time i want to say a big thank you to richard and, and daniel um for your insights and also a massive thank you to our viewers as well you can catch the rest of the series and much more over at ffnews.com and of course you can catch the report embedded into this video as well make sure to check it out it's going to be brilliant um guys thank you very much i hope you've had a good time and i look forward to seeing you soon